Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another week of MSM TV. I'm Ben McNabo, music supervisor at Main State Music Theater. Hi, everyone, and I'm Amanda Choate. I'm the development director at Main State Music Theater. And this week, we have a great episode for you. We have two fan favorites, Missy Dows and Tim Hughes. Uh, Missy Dows, you'll remember from our production of Gypsy, as well as All Night Strut, and another fan favorite, Young Frankenstein, just from a few years ago. Uh, Missy is a New York-based actor, singer, and coach who's originally from Long Island. And Missy has appeared in many regional theaters all over the country. You would have seen her in NBC's hit TV show Smash, and she regularly originates roles in new works. Um, she is also on the board of U.S. Comics, founder of the, app, uh, of the Actor Incorporated, and is an avid animal lover and a proponent of hashtag adopt, don't shop. And joining Missy is Tim Hughes, also no stranger to the MSMT stage, having starred in A Chorus Line, Footloose, and also alongside Missy in Young Frankenstein. Audiences may also recognize this leading man from his role as the strongman in The Greatest Showman movie, the original Pabby in Frozen on Broadway, and his current gig at Hades Town on Broadway. So we'll be right back with these two great guests, Missy and Tim, right after this. Welcome back, everybody. We are here with Missy and Tim. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's happy to be it's here. Nice to see you guys. And we just have to find out how are you, where are you, how has this whole thing been for you? What's going on? Um, I'm uh, in my apartment in uh, New Jersey with my dogs. Uh, and uh, I should probably be concerned that by how well I've been doing in quarantine, but um, it's it's been it's been okay. I've been able to work on things I really want to work on and uh, take a pause and relax. So uh, I'm doing okay. Family, friends, everyone's good. So I, I feel very lucky. Good, awesome. I'm currently in I'm outside of Indianapolis and my sisters. Um, I left um, right after um, Broadway went on hiatus. I was upstate for about a week and then. Um, I was going to head back in and the numbers had just gotten crazy. Yeah. Um, so I rented a car and drove here and I've been basically living with my sister and her family for three months. <laughs> oh. um, Do you have nieces and nephews? Yes, there's my nephew and two nieces are here, um, oh. which they have an amazing amount of space, um, the yard, a pool. So it's been, it's been great. Um, but I will head back to New York end of this week. You both have worked obviously in Maine at Maine State and um, you worked there together 2016 or 15? 15, 15, I thought it was like 20 years ago. I was like, how? I, know. <laughs> I, was, I was like, where are you going? In 2015. <laughs> so I'm curious, like what, um, what were some of your favorite parts about, about spending time in Maine, about working in Maine or working together on that show specifically, um, Young Frankenstein? Well, I think Maine in the summer, I've said this before, but that's what I envision heaven to be like. I mean, the, the weather, the food, the people, it's just um, magical. And I really uh, love food and there's so much of it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and that show was particularly fun because it was just a fun group. I have specific memories of Tim actually, because he didn't make his entrance until later on in the show and he'd be half dressed, half in his makeup. <laughs> When they announced that Mamma Mia was in the next season, he would burst through the curtain and be like, Mamma Mia! And freak out. It was, I, I loved it so much. That was magical. I forgot about that. Oh my God. Maine is, I mean, like Missy was saying, it's just so magical. Um, it is an ideal place for the summer. I have such a sense of gratitude when I think about Maine State. They really, um, had given me opportunities. They were the first to give me roles um, before I was like starting to play roles. And I learned so much from being a leader in those companies. Um, I learned, I, I had to step up to the plate. You know, I had to um, 
to become a, a leader in those companies with the internship program and just the nature of what it means to be uh, an actor coming in to play one of those roles. Um, I, and I hope that I thrived in that position. Like I'm super grateful for it because it gave me a sense of responsibility. I was able to just like kind of spread my wings up at Main State. Um, and it's just such a family. I mean, it, it just is, it felt like so familiar to go to that rehearsal space, to walk by all the offices. Um, it was always, I think I've been there three times now. Um, it just was always such an ideal, magical escape. Um, the, the location alone makes you feel like you're on vacation. And then I've had the opportunities to just take on three different roles with three incredible companies led by amazing creative teams. Um, it's just such a, an oasis of uh, love and, and theater up there. I miss it dearly. Um, the young Frank question for you, Tim, that everyone probably, audiences probably first think about is the shoes. Oh my God. So, <laughs> oh my and God. specifically tapping the end of act one in those shoes. So here's the story. So I learned it all in regular taps. We practiced all morning. In the afternoon, we were blocking scenes and I was wearing the platform shoes that I'd be wearing for the rest of the show. And I started reviewing the tap in those big shoes. And Mark Robin, like from the corner, saw me doing it. Like I was on a break. And he was like, uh, you're making a lot of those sounds. And I was like, I'm not making all of them. But <laughs> right, you were like, oh no. I'll take this. And he was like, do you think you could do the, the, um, the number in those shoes? And I was like, no. <laughs> I said, um, do you want all the sounds or do you want me to just be able to move in these shoes? And he was like, I would take you just moving in those shoes. So I was like, okay. I said, I'll try, I'll try. Um, so we got another pair of those platform shoes and we put taps on them. Um, and then I, I rehearsed in, um, in those shoes and then ended up doing the number in these like, Five inch they were very tall. with tap shoes, with taps on them. It, it was an insane challenge, um, but now I love it. Like now I like love that <laughs> I figured out how to tap in those. I feel like, you know, That's women have cool. been doing it for years, doing it in, in heels. So I'm like, oh, now I feel like so accomplished, even though, you know, women have been doing it all this time. but. That's the story behind it. Um, and I'm super like thankful it turned out. Like I, uh, I ended up doing the role again at the Muni um, oh. right after and they expected the same thing. So now it's like my niche. And Misty, so you both between the Fulton and Main State Music Theater, you played Inga and Ula and <laughs> producers and Young Frank, which are pretty similar characters, but yeah like awesome Mel Brooks comedy and like how did you like doing that like specific type of comedy genre um, a couple times at different theaters but under Mark's direction each time I loved I loved it. I grew up on Mel Brooks so I was like in it to win it like I was like mm -hmm. this I've been training my whole life for this I'm ready and I was really excited I I've never been blonde in my life and then suddenly every role I was playing was blonde which is was really fun to do um, but it was, uh, it was so fun. And what was great for me to see, especially being Inga, both Fulton and Main State, is the different takes, mm -hmm. but with the same kind of, um, we're in the same kind of style or genre, but also how Mark nurtured people differently and how the, he, uh, he encourages them to, to bring their own selves and mm -hmm. senses of humor to things. Um, and so when we were rehearsing in Main State, I was like, this is great, like, because I knew everything already from doing it. So I got to watch a lot, which was really, really fun. Um, it was just a blast. I mean, get to go on stage in a blonde wig, push-up bra and belt, I was in. Growing, 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 growing. 
So 2015 was the last or the first time that, that I played a show at Main State. I have to say that Young Frank was definitely like, I have never laughed so much as a musician sitting in the pit. <laughs> and I just remember the chemistry that you and Karis and Bobby had, like the three of you, the whole show. And I remember there was one part, I don't remember what, which act was in, but when um, Bobby and Karis, and maybe you were with them too, and, and, um, and um, Jeremiah, but coming in through the house, was it just the two of them? And they were look, oh no, they were looking for you guys. You were on the, you were up on oh, the yes. <laughs> Oh my God, and every night with the audience, the things <laughs> that Karis would come up with to say to some of these people was just outrageous. And- I feel like there needs to be a reprise of this show. Would it be? was- I'm in. <laughs> honestly, my favorite, I think it was the, my favorite time, like enjoyable time as a musician, aside from playing music, music aside, just from getting to kind of watch or listen to the show every night, you can't see it, but I think it was definitely the most enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I guess, cause we don't, at Main State, we don't get to do a lot of new works. We've done a few recently, a few premieres, but what is something that you really enjoy about originating a role? And then what's something that is unenjoyable, maybe strong, but like that's um, stressful or where's the pressure in that? What's that experience like with, with the writers and in some cases if the character exists already in some other medium? Hmm. Uh, I, I love the opportunity to be a part of the development of a new show, um, being a very specific type. Um, I always make it a strategy to get in on the foundation making groundwork of a piece because then um, I can craft it around who I am and what I'm and what my capabilities are, um, and that works to my favor. It's it's much harder to step into shoes um, that have been um, worn and established by another actor. Um, there's also a challenge in that. And the fun thing about um, the amazing directors and, and main state in general is the embracing of everybody's individual take. Um, you know, like Karis brings something so unique to every role that she's played and every role is like a just iconic <laughs> mainstream um, role that like divas have played for years and yet Karis makes it her own. Um, so to develop a new show, um, it's like the greatest opportunity to bring all of your skill set to the table um, and to really um, make what you want from the, fr with the role. Um, I think it's one of the greatest opportunities to just bring everything you have to the table um, to to take from scraps and make something like make a human character come to life. I think as actors, uh, we're we're not uh, we don't always give ourselves permissions to be our whole selves or to bring our whole selves to the table because we feel like we have to fit into boxes or fill certain shoes. But when you um, are creating something, the opportunity to be free, to be open and to give yourself permission, I think not only um, helps your work, but it helps your life as a creative too. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, I always, uh, I've got a, a pep in my step when I feel like I'm contributing or it, like to a story that um, there's a bigger picture that, um, that I was a piece of or a part of. And um, it's just playing, trying to figure out what fits, not what's right, not what's wrong, what fits. And it's, to me, that's the most exciting moments. I, those are the moments I live for in rehearsals or even during performances sometimes, you know, something will occur to you like, oh, that's, mm -hmm. you know, or this is how it relates to me or, and bringing who you are, like Tim was saying, to the table. It's, it's, it's so exciting and it's exciting to see too and everybody around the room. Well, it's exciting to watch. Yeah. The most exciting thing is when somebody's instinct um, like just is revealed in their performance and it just allows the story to go or the character to go in a, a new direction. Mm -hmm. It's just, it feels the most, you know, authentic. Mm -hmm. I know that's a cliche word that can um, be thrown out in, when it comes to theater, but it's true. Like, especially in development, it, those, those moments feel the most authentic. Well, um, we have a game for you guys if you'll stick around yeah. and we'll put you against each other and see who wins. So we'll be back <laughs> with a little game with Missy and Tim right after this. Okay.
So we're back with Missy and Tim, and we have, as always, we have a little game. So this game is, we're calling it uh, Musical Monster Mash. <laughs> so the way it works is you'll be given a one word clue and you have to guess the uh, corresponding monster. Now they're not all monsters in the like cliche monster sense. Some of them are kind of just more mysterious characters in musicals. Some of them are monstrous, but they're not necessarily bad. Mm. They're not necessarily villains. Okay. They all have some kind of monster element to them in musical theater. Oh, okay. and there's a 10 second time limit. Well, it seems like Missy is ready. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. I'm gonna go right for Missy. Right. And the first word is swamp. Toxic Avenger? Ooh, good call, but no. Oh, that would have been my guess. No, that was a good call. That was Thanks. It was okay. Shrek. Oh. I went way obscure. <laughs> so for 10. Your clue is bells. Uh, the beast. Nope. Oh, yes, oh, yeah, I was thinking Bell. It's, I was, it's Quasimodo. Yes. Okay. How is it? <laughs> Missy, Prince. Is it Beauty and the Beast? Yes. Okay. Yes. That was good. That was hard. That was, that was fast. Sorry. <laughs> I was okay. going like Prince, the pop artist. <laughs> Has yeah. it been hit a minute? Wrong, wrong direction. <laughs> so for Tim, the clue is bolts, B O L T S. Frankenstein. Yes. That was an easy one, but yeah. we'll give you that. Yeah. <laughs> that was good though. Missy, melt. Wicked Witch of the West. Yes. Ah, oh, you guys are good. We should You've have been done five in seconds. All Listen. the monster shows. <laughs> so for Tim, the clue is two sided. Jekyll and Hyde. Yes. With a wow. second left. Wow. <laughs> Missy. Yes. Mask. Phantom of the Opera. Gosh. Tim, your word is razor. Sweeney Todd. Yes. Missy, hungry. I know it's not hungry, hungry hippos, but um, um. Oh. I don't know. Audrey. What? Oh. Mm. oh. No, 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 no. I went to. Yeah, no. That's a hard one. Tim, the word is alien. <laughs> okay, why don't we do the other one and see if he gets it? The other word? Yeah. I forget it, so you give it. Okay. Um, we the point. Missy. We'll do a slot, but Tim, the word is warp. Oh. Oh, Rocky Horror? Yeah, Frank and Frank. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a hard one. That was a hard one. Okay, but we'll go back to Missy. Oh, this one's hard, like too. Rocky Horror. What? Who's Frank the and alien? Frankenfurter? He's an alien. Oh I, oh, I didn't realize he was an alien. Yeah. Voice. Ursula. Yeah, yeah. Oh. that was a good one. Very good. So that that just tied you up. Oh, you're gosh. four and four now. What? <laughs> yeah. Okay, for Tim, the clue is Empire State Building. King Kong. Yes. Oh my. Oh, I forgot. Oh yeah. Wow, I'm impressed, Missy. Family. Fester? Yeah. Yes, Adam, Adam, all of them. Yeah. All, right. okay. all of them. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> okay, Tim. Yep. Pirate. Pirate Queen? Six seconds. <laughs> uh, 
Are you in the Star Catcher? <laughs> no. Well, close. Captain Hook. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. Missy? Yes. Deo. Beetlejuice. Ben! Deo! I don't know what I don't know it. Okay, well that was our game. I think did we tie? I think it might be tie. It's a tie. We can give it to you guys. Tie. Give yourselves a round of applause. Monster Mash. Everybody well, visit Main State. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for answering our questions. And we're really glad that you're both doing well and and that you're happy and healthy and we can't wait to see you back here because we definitely will get you guys back here. It'll be so great. Sending love to everybody yes. in state. You know, sh show some support. It's, I'm sure it's been incredibly difficult not to be having a summer season, but theater is essential. So yes, continue supporting that company. And, and I send my love to all of you. Thank you. I do too. Ditto. And we're going to campaign for a revival of Young Frank. Yes. yes. We're yes. working on it. Yes. yes. We're going to do it. Bye, you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. That's going to do it for us this week on MSN TV. We want to thank our guests, Missy Douse and Tim Hughes. And we want to make sure that you follow us on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with our future shows. But for now, I want you to go outside and enjoy this amazing 4th of July weekend and have a wonderful 4th. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye.